The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, released in 1953, stands as a pioneering classic in the realm of monster movies. Directed by Eugene Lurier, this film marks a pivotal moment in cinematic history, introducing the world to the concept of a colossal creature wreaking havoc on humanity. Among the myriad roles portrayed in this thrilling narrative, which character resonated most with you? What is your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. The movie The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms showcased a few standout moments that added depth to its impact. For instance, the roller coaster scene near the end was filmed at the Pike Amusement Park in Long Beach, California. It featured the Cyclone Racer, and a replica was burned for the movie's climax. Another noteworthy aspect was Ray Harryhausen's meticulous attention to detail in animation. In a scene where the creature steps on a parked car, it's not merely a passing action. The sequence includes the beast crushing the car, pausing, swiping it aside, then further crushing it with the other foot. This close-up shot, though not directly linked to the plot, heightened the movie's realism, a rarity in B-grade monster films of the time. Additionally, the Coney Island Amusement Park in the film was actually shot at the Long Beach Amusement Park in Long Beach, California. Filming took place during late hours from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. to capture the desired scenes. These subtle yet meticulous touches in the movie, from using specific locations to the attention given to animation details, contributed significantly to its impact, making it a memorable piece in the monster movie genre. Influential in inspiring Godzilla, the beast from 20,000 Fathoms marked a significant shift in monster movies. Drawing from the success of King Kong's re-release in 1952, it pioneered the portrayal of a colossal creature awakened or transformed by an atomic bomb. The film's portrayal of the monster's havoc in New York, underscored by shots of panicked citizens and a noteworthy reference to Judy Garland's show at the Palace Theater, added a unique layer of tension and realism to the narrative. This groundbreaking approach laid the groundwork for subsequent monster films, leaving an enduring impact on the genre. In the film, footage depicting an arctic avalanche triggered by the beast's movements originated from the 1935 movie Sheep. Interestingly, the museum sequence featured an artificial dinosaur skeleton purchased from Archeo, initially used in Bringing Up Baby in 1938. Curiously, Vera Miles and Paul Pisoni appeared in the trailer, but were absent from the actual film. These unique details add an intriguing layer to the background of the beast from 20,000 Fathoms, showcasing connections to earlier films and unexpected casting choices contributing to its narrative texture. The film, originally scored by Mitchell Michelet, underwent a change in music at Warner Brothers' insistence. David Budolph's score replaced Michelet's deemed insufficiently powerful. During the octopus shark sequence, discernible aquarium footage show with octopus suckers gripping the glass. Alvin Greenman, following the narrator, was the first to speak and spot the beast on radar. Six years earlier, he portrayed Alfred, the Macy's janitor, in Miracle on 34th Street. James Best, known for Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane in The Dukes of Hazard, portrayed the second speaking character, Charlie. These details offer intriguing insights into the movie's production and casting choices, contributing to its depth and history. Titled with exaggerated depth, the beast from 20,000 fathoms utilized hyperbole equating to roughly 22 miles, though the ocean's deepest trench plunges just over 35,000 feet. Upon release, some prints featured sepia tones with underwater scenes tinted green. Remarkably, its 1953 box office earnings topped 5,000,000, ,000, marking a notable success. The film's exaggerated title, the coloring techniques used, and its impressive box office figures distinguish it within cinematic history, capturing attention for its imaginative portrayal and financial success. In the movie, Professor Elson's description of the dinosaur as a survivor of the Paleolithic era is inaccurate. It actually belongs to the Mesozoic era. Meanwhile, the dinosaur pictures used to identify the monster feature works by Charles R. Knight, a pivotal artist shaping dinosaur imagery in pop culture. His art influenced classic films like The Lost World and King Kong and directly inspired the creature in this film animated by Ray Harrahausen. Knight passed away just before this movie's release. 
Moreover, the elderly couple in the opera scene, Franklin Farnham and Bess Flowers, were prolific dress extras in Hollywood. Farnham appeared in over 700 movies and TV shows, while Flowers, known as the Queen of the Extras, had over 1,000 appearances. Their collective appearances spanned 136 movies, but not necessarily in shared scenes. These details add intriguing layers to the film, from the art shaping the creature's portrayal to the presence of celebrated figures in minor roles, enriching the background of the beast from 20,000 fathoms. Merv Griffin lent his voice to a hospital scene in the 1953 film, while Ray Bradbury's encounter with Ray Harrahausen sparked a significant turn. Initially visiting the set as a friend, Bradbury was handed a script titled Monster from the Sea. Upon reading it, he recognized similarities to his own published story in the Saturday Evening Post. His tale about a dinosaur wrecking a lighthouse closely mirrored a scene in the script. A telegram swiftly arrived, offering to purchase the film rights for 2000. The script's title transformed to match Bradbury's story, becoming the beast from 20,000 Fathoms, while Bradbury later retitled his story The Foghorn. This fortuitous connection between Bradbury's published work and the movie script laid the groundwork for the film's iconic title and storyline, demonstrating the unforeseen impact of chance encounters and literary connections in film production. Unholy Alliances the dark impact of greed-driven deals and unethical choices on a cast member in The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Amidst Hollywood's shadows, a cast member from The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms faced a harrowing farewell, seeking solace away from an industry rife with toxicity. Their departure hinted at deeper struggles within the Tinseltown landscape. The lost masterpiece? Unsolved mysteries surround this cast member's unreleased film, shrouding it in obscurity. Its vanishing legacy in Hollywood whispers of unfinished tales and forgotten brilliance. Ageism and gender bias, their icy grip on Hollywood, silently impacted careers, casting shadows on talented actors, possibly including members of the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Under the magnifying glass, these issues loomed, altering paths and possibilities. The public's jury, opinions split among fans regarding the cast members' affairs. Polarized reactions and varied stances reflected the tumultuous nature of public perception, adding layers to the personal narrative. This glimpse into Hollywood's darker corners intertwines with the narrative of the beast from 20,000 Fathoms, revealing complexities often veiled behind the glamour, etching a poignant chapter in cinematic history. As we bid adieu to our cinematic journey through the colossal wonders of the beast from 20,000 Fathoms, I invite you to pause and reflect on the impact this timeless spectacle has had on your imagination. Perhaps it sparked a fascination for prehistoric creatures or stirred a sense of awe for the vast unknown of our world. What moments linger in your mind, the spine-tingling roars, the epic clash between man and monster, or the haunting beauty of its special effects? Share your musings, your cherished memories, or your newfound revelations. Let's weave a tapestry of perspectives, each thread a unique experience that adds depth to our understanding of this cinematic gem. Whether you've recently encountered its towering presence or treasured it for years, your thoughts bring life to the legacy of this classic tale. Thank you for joining this exploration into the depths of imagination and nostalgia. Your engagement and passion add richness to our conversations about this iconic film. Until our paths cross again in the realm of storytelling and wonder, keep the spirit of curiosity alive. Gratefully yours.